Welcome to Unleash Your Audacious Confidence on Win Win Women TV. This show is all about sharing the tips, tools, and techniques that will allow you to step boldly in the direction of your dreams despite your feelings, fears, or past failures. To imagine what's possible for yourself and live the life you deserve. Well, hello, 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 and welcome everyone to this episode of Unleash Your Audacious Confidence here on Win Win Women TV. I'm your host, Alicia Curry, and I love talking all things confidence. You know that if you watch the show at any point in time, you know that I love, love this topic. I am, let me get my headphones out of the way. I am super passionate about helping you unleash the confidence inside of you. And today's topic, we're going to talk about your authentic voice. How do you share your authentic voice with confidence? And before I get to that, I just want to welcome you all to Win Win Women uh, and to check out winwinwomen.com, check out the store, see what you can get. They have mugs, they have shirts, you know, they got some swag, they got some things, and they also have some books there that uh, you can partake of um, to help yourself, educate yourself um, in different topics. So go over to the Win Win Women store, check it out. And so today, oh, today we're going to talk about uh, your authentic voice. And so what does that even mean? <laughs> uh, I remember years ago, there was this big, big, like everybody was talking about authenticity. You got to be authentic. You got to be authentic. I think it was about 10, 10, 12 years ago. And I stopped myself one day and I'm like, I'm hearing this word authentic so much. You got to be authentic and you got to, uh, uh, you got to show up authentically. And I, I started looking, like I really started observing people and looking at people and questioning myself and asking myself, am I showing up authentically? Am I really being who I am right now? Or, or am I, am I um, faking it or putting something on for other people? And at the time, I have to say at the time, I felt I was being authentic and true to me. I really did. I believe that. And what I wasn't aware of because our minds play tricks on us, right? Our mind, I have a coach that says, your mind is as insidious as heck. He's like, it's as, it's so insidious. It, it tricks you, it deceives you, it buries stuff, it keeps things away from you, all to try to help keep you safe, all in this effort to help keep you in what it determines as safe. Um, so in my mind, I thought I was being authentic. But I, as I started studying this out more and, and looking at things and, and even looking at myself, I realized there were thoughts, there were feelings, there were things that I was not expressing out of fear, out of limiting beliefs. Um, and that was holding my authenticity hostage. I, my mind was holding my own authenticity hostage. And I, I didn't even realize that until I started using my voice and I started shedding layers of limiting beliefs and peeling those things away and really allowing myself to think and feel and experience things on a deeper level and express those things to people that I start really understanding my own authentic voice. So as I, I'm going through this today, and I'll give you a few tips, and that's my very first tip is to, to even know what is your authentic voice. You know, you need to do some work there to figure that out. Otherwise, that's what really leads you to sounding like everybody else out there is because you're listening to that and it, you're just using your mind as a filter, um, not even a, a good filtration system. <laughs> it's just, or it's a regurgitation system. 
So it's what you're hearing out here. It's passing through just on a shallow level of your brain and then coming out of your mouth. And you're not, it, you're not allowing it to interact, intersect with your own thoughts, ideas, and feelings of it. And do I believe this or not believe it? How do I believe it? Why do I believe it? What, what makes this true? What makes this not true? What, you know, like really critically think about something before you regurgitate it. Because that's when you start sounding like everything and everyone else out there is when you just allow it to come, come through your ears and pass directly through to your mouth without it interacting with your own thought processes and your own beliefs and, and everything like that. So um, I, cause I hear this all the time. I hear people say things and I'm like, why are you even saying that? You're, you know, you look at their life and you look at what they're saying and it's like, you're just regurgitating stuff, aren't you? You're not living that. This is not your lived experience. So when you want to get to authenticity, you want to share your lived experience, not things that you've heard of or somebody said, or you're just passing along a message. Um, that's when you start sounding generic and like everything else out there and cookie cutter. You're not allowing your lived experience to interact with, with the information, with the knowledge. So the first tip I have for you is to really tap into who you are. And the one surefire way, surefire way to do that is building a personal brand. It's a challenging thing to do. I help clients do that. And I've gone through that process. And it's through that process that I understood my story. I understood who I was. I understood where I came from. I understood why I had these limiting beliefs. I understood why confidence was such a problem for me. I understood why I struggled so much, not just with my confidence, but, but in general. I understood the little pieces and the little things about me that, that impacted me in a big, big way. It was through building my own personal brand and understanding my story and understanding where I came from and what, what experiences I had, but also um, through that process, being able to shed a lot of those things. And that is where, when I said earlier, I thought I was being authentic, but in reality, I was doing just that. I was allowing things to pass through my ears, out of my mouth and not interacting with my brain. Or if it was like skimming the surface of my brain, of my thoughts, of my beliefs, if, it, if I would quickly reject things that, that uh, made me uncomfortable or, or brought up um, any kind of challenge to my, belief, my limiting belief about something. See, I didn't even I didn't even know what limiting beliefs were. I didn't even know we had them. I did I had no idea that the first time someone used that terminology, limiting beliefs, I was like, what is that? I mean, I I clearly understood what it meant, limited belief. I understood what limiting beliefs were in theory, but what is a limiting belief? Well, it's a belief that you hold either about yourself or about a circumstance, a situation that limits you from seeing the possibility of other, other things uh, with that particular um, concept or, or idea. So you're limited in your scope, you're limited in your vision, you're limited in uh, seeing opportunities or seeing it for, seeing it a different way. You've closed off your mind. You're in a very fixed mindset space and you've closed off from learning anything else about it. And um, I remember clearly being in a, a workshop with other entrepreneurs and I was in this workshop and they were talking about tapping and, you know, when you tap the pressure points, how it releases stress and it releases uh, a lot of these other things, fears and anxieties and, 
and all these things. And I sat there and I'm like, well, I don't have any fear and I don't have any anxieties. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just fine. <laughs> I'm just, I am fine. And I don't even know why I'm here uh, with all these people. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm telling on myself, but it was, it was that those were the thoughts I was having. I was like, I don't even know why I'm here. So when we did the exercise and we had this exercise to do where we're telling each other our fears so we could tap, tap them away, I was sitting there with my ego and my ignorance and I was like, I don't have any fear. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I don't even know why I'm here. And after that workshop, after I went to that workshop, I started really thinking, because I think a seed was planted during that workshop. I don't quite remember what it was said or anything like that, but I started to think, is that true? Am I operating without fear? I know that I'm, I'm a Christian woman and I have strong belief and, and um, you know, faith conquers fear. And, but if I'm truly to believe the Bible, and the Bible says, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. Hundreds of times in it. I don't know the exact number. But if it says fear not so much, why is it saying fear not so much? Because fear does come. And it's, it's a, an instruction or a, uh, uh, um, it's God is telling us that it's going to come, but remember, you don't have to fear. So me thinking fear not meant I don't have fear. I had to reevaluate that belief. It's not that I don't have fear, is that I have faith that has as I build it, it has the capacity to overcome fear. So I started releasing some of those things a little bit more and really starting to tap into, well, what are my fears? Oh, and that opened up a floodgate. What are my fears? And I started to really examine the things that I was afraid of. And one of my biggest fears was of judgment, someone judging me. It was a fear of judgment. And so I had to learn how to navigate what that looked like. Like what, what did that mean? And what that looked like for, for, um, what that looked like for me. So just so we don't lose the topic, we are talking about your authentic voice, right? And I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to share, how do you recognize your own authentic voice? And it's a, it's a work that you have to do. So I'm still on my point one about tapping into who you really are. Um, and you have to look at what your fears are, what those limiting beliefs are, what, what your lived experience is. And when you understand those things, then you can start adding to that your vulnerability. And it's not as fodder for other people to gawk at or criticize or, or make fun of. It's an opportunity to share openly and honestly a piece of yourself that will connect with another person's struggle that is the same as yours or what you went through. Because you don't want to start sharing, and this is, this is my next tip, you don't want to start sharing something as you're going through it when it is still 
quite painful for you and you have not yet kind of come out of the other side, learn the lesson. Because if you, if you really want to make an impact with people, if you want to teach people, help people through things, coach people or, or um, be a mentor for someone or be there for someone, you have to have walked a certain distance from the actual pain that you can talk about it, that you can share it and you can share the lesson and you can share the hope and you can share the value with other people without breaking down. If you try to share too early in this process, you can re-injure yourself and you can injure yourself in a way that you don't want to share it anymore because you're too close, you're too vulnerable. And if someone says something or does something that is like picking the scab off the wound, when the wound is still raw and it hasn't quite healed, the scab is still fresh. It could do irreparable damage to you. So we don't want to step into that. We want to make sure that as you understand your journey and as you're building your, the understanding of your own um, challenge that you went through, maybe it's not as painful to, you know, or it happened a way long time ago. Like for me, it happened a way long time ago. So it wasn't something that I was still dealing with. Um, I was able to share from a different perspective and a different place when I talk about my confidence journey. Now, uh, some of you who have seen these episodes before, been a part of this show before, know that I, I went through a situation not too long ago uh, where I was diagnosed with breast cancer and had surgery. I'm cancer free now. But in the middle of that process, I did not share my journey. I did not share what was happening. In fact, a lot of people, when I started sharing it, were so shocked that I was going through that. And they were like, you never said anything to us. You never told me. Why didn't you tell me? So because I needed to walk through the journey, I needed to see myself on the other side of it. And know that I was I was better than okay before I was ready to share because there were some tough times in there. And I don't want to be, because I want to be a beacon of hope for someone and I want to be a, um, I want to share things openly and vulnerably, but not in a way that might cause someone else pain uh, or myself, I chose to hold on to that journey until I walked it all the way through. I remember not too long ago, there was a celebrity who um, she shares a lot of her, her life and her family on Instagram. She shares a lot of her herself on Instagram and she was, uh, she was pregnant and she was so excited for this new baby that they were having and, and would share all the pictures of, you know, the, the different stages of, of her pregnancy and stuff. And then unfortunately she started having pain, started bleeding, went to the emergency room and documented the process. Now I am a big proponent of documenting things, documenting events, documenting things that are happening in your life, taking videos, taking photos, allowing that to also be part of your healing journey. So she was documenting her miscarriage as it was happening. And she shared it on social media as it's happened, like immediately after it happened, the next day she started sharing the photos and the video of that gut-wrenching time 
that she and her family were going through. And some of the comments were so painful. As a mother, myself, as a woman, I was reading some of those comments about how, what is wrong with her? How dare she? You know, this is, uh, it's all about for the clicks. And she was letting people into a very intimate moment in her family's life because she's a public figure and, and she knew that people are going to try to get this information and invade their privacy to get it. So she made the difficult decision to share it and was ripped apart by some people for doing that to the point where she got off of all social media for months. She just cut herself off completely. And that's what I mean by if you share too early, it could, it could hurt you worse. So as you're developing your, your, your story and, and pulling these, these gems together of, of vulnerability, be sure that you are healed enough to share where if someone says something, it's not going to tear you down. Um, and then this, this person uh, got pregnant again, like a year later, got pregnant again and announced that they were having a baby, but put nothing else on social media about her pregnancy journey or what was happening. She announced the baby after um, the the trimester where she lost her last child had passed. And then she was, she shared that when they were knew that they were completely out of the woods, it had been like six months. And then she shared that she was pregnant and everybody's like, Oh my God, what happened? And then she didn't even share a lot about the birth or anything like that, because that experience that she had is still so painful. And I'm sure, you know, Trolls out there would have said some other stuff. So as you're finding your authentic self and your authentic voice, and you're wanting to share some vulnerable pieces of you, make sure to protect you first. Protect you first. Protect the you that you are. And know that that story that you're about to share will help other women, help other, other others out there. But always make sure that if someone trolls you or someone says something, that it's not going to be like picking at a scab. Rather, it's like picking at a healed, uh, a scar that's been healed, completely healed. And, you know, I have, I have a scar from a burn that I burned myself severely one year, really badly on my leg. And now the scar that's there, completely healed. To the point that I don't even remember it's it being there, and uh, and and unless I wear shorts or something that someone see, sees it and they're like, oh, what's that? Like that? It's like, oh, I even forget that's there. It's just like, psh, no big deal. So if someone says something, it's like, psh, no big deal. But before that was healed, I was covering that thing up. I didn't want anybody to see it. It was so embarrassing. I couldn't believe I did that to myself, that I, that I, I was so careless that I burned myself so badly. And I thought my, my, my leg would be deformed forever. And I would never, ever, ever be able to wear a pair of shorts again, or a skirt that was above the knee. And I, I really, really, for a year, for a couple of years was hiding that scar. And now it's like, it's like nothing. So that's where you have to get with your story that it's, you can tell the story, you can bring the emotion into the story. You can share that story with all the same, um, because you remember it vividly, but the emotional charge isn't there for you to get overwhelmed by when you're sharing it. You can still feel choked up by it, but don't get overwhelmed by it. All right. Oh, I've talked so much. Um, so <laughs> when you're sharing your authentic story, make sure that you, you can articulate the pain points. 
the really difficult parts of it. So that's the next step, the difficult parts of it that were painful for you to go through so that you can connect to someone else's pain, but also that they see you on the other side of that pain so that they can have hope and know that, oh, okay, she went through it, then I can go through it too, and I can come out on the other side. So um, once you understand what those pain points are and understand what the key elements of your story are, when you're telling, sharing your authentic voice, you're sharing your story, you're sharing your why and, and your purpose and your mission and all the things that are deep inside of your heart that you want to come pouring out. Make sure that you're being succinct. You're finding the point of the story to share. You're finding the, what is the crux? You know, what is the meat of that, of that whole uh, incident, encounter, whatever it is, what, what, what's at the heart of it and get right to it. Don't spend a lot of time in preamble. You lose a lot of people. If you spend time trying to set up, well, I woke up at 7 a.m. It was a Thursday morning. It was like any other Thursday. I went down, I brushed my teeth. I went down for breakfast. And, you know, you've lost people. <laughs> you've lost everybody. If the whole point of the story was overcoming a, 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 a near fatal accident, that helped you, um, that transformed your life and the way you thought, and now you're living each day like it's your last or something like that, if that's your message. Unless the breakfast was a pivotal part of what almost happened to you, skip the breakfast, you know, skip it over, skip the waking up at seven in the morning, unless that had a pivotal role, like, if you had gotten up at 6.30 instead of 7, I would have avoided this whole situation, but I decided to sleep in. And now this is what happened. You know, unless it's a pivotal part of the, the part of the story you want to share, leave it out. Um, I, I used to write screenplays and in, in the training of writing screenplays, um, they, I don't know if they still do this, but they tell you to start your story in the middle because too many people start the story way, way too far at the beginning. So you start your story in the middle and then you build some context around that. You need to know the backstory. So you have to flesh out the entire backstory of each character, the entire back. So you know where they came from. You know what what their whole backstory is about, but you start the storytelling in the middle. That way you're grabbing the audience's attention right away and you're not now build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, build, build, you know, build, build, build. And then it's like, ah, finally, here we are. 45 minutes later, we're finally at the story, you know, oops. Lost my camera for a second. Sorry about that. So the, the important things to understand when you're, you want to share your authentic voice. You want to share um, from your heart. First is you have to understand what your limiting beliefs are. If you have around that situation, what are the fears that you have? What are the pain points that you have? So I'm doing a quick recap. What are the pain points that you have? Um, tap into those things and building a personal brand can help you do that really well. If you, if you start journaling, if you're a person that likes to journal, then journal out these, these ideas and these thoughts and these stories. Journal them out so that you can start writing them and getting them out. If you like to speak it out, talk into a recorder, a voice recorder speak it out, get on video, get on camera and talk about it, talk through it. I made a series of videos while I was going through my journey 
before surgery, after surgery, when I heard I had to have surgery again, I made another video. So I have it documented because I'm not a journaler, writing journal, but I have it documented in video. So use those tools to help help you understand that. You could practice some mindfulness to become more aware of your thoughts and your emotions. If I didn't practice my own mindfulness to become aware of my own thoughts, I would not have realized in that workshop that all the stuff I was saying about, I don't fear anything and I don't have limiting beliefs were all BS, <laughs> right? So, you know, you need to go deep and, and practice mindfulness. Maybe ask some people around you what their thoughts about it was, watching you go through something like that. How did they see it? How do they feel about it? You know, so that you can journal, you can have these things at the ready so that when you are speaking or writing or, or sharing in any way, in any profound way, it's based on your past experience, it's based on your experience, not just based on what you heard someone say that you did not apply your experience to or your critical thinking to. Um, so that's really, really important. And I hope this has been helpful in, in uncovering and really discovering your voice, your authentic voice, so that you can share it with the world. Because there's only one of you. While experiences can be universal, um, say, for instance, a divorce over half the population go through it, your experience is unique. The way you handled it is unique. So what are the pieces of that that you can pull out and share in a very truthful, vulnerable way that connects with the audience? And that is how you find and share your authentic voice. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, until next time, this is Alicia Curry signing off saying, be bold, be brave, and every day do one thing to step out with audacious confidence. And I will see you next week with another episode of Unleash Your Audacious Confidence here on winwinwomen.tv. If you want to connect with me, if you want to know more about building your own personal brand, go ahead, connect alicia360.com, alicia360.com. Would love to hear from you. Let me know if you're enjoying the show. Just, you can send me a WhatsApp. You can uh, follow me on any uh, social media and send me a DM. Would love to hear from you. Would love to hear uh, any ideas you have for the show, or if you have questions or comments that you'd like me to, to answer on the show, I'd be happy to do that. So please reach out, uh, connect with me, and I'd love to learn more about you so I can help you unleash your audacious confidence. Till next time. Bye.